Okay, so we're going to kind of take everything and bring in a lot together again today, which I feel like we say a lot in mechanics and materials. So we're going to look at all these material property relationships. So still everything is homogeneous, isotropic, and it's still behaving in a linearly elastic manner. Okay, so there's a couple of things we want to make sure we remember. So we want to make sure we remember that the um, lateral um, strain over the longitudinal strain is going to be the negative of that nu, um, which is Poisson's ratio. And then, of course, um, that the strain is going to be the stress over Young's modulus of elasticity. Okay, so those are things we're just going to assume that you know how to use going forward. And if not, that's not what we're doing here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write up a generalized Hooke's law. Okay, so we've got ourselves a little cube um, with the stresses coming out in all the different directions. So let's specifically look at what is happening in the x direction. Okay, so first of all, in the x direction, um, this um, stress is going to cause, um, so I don't want to say an equal sign, I'll say causes. So this one causes this particular strain, right, the sigma x over Young's modulus. Okay, now this one here is going to cause um, the lateral from the y direction. Okay, so lat from y um, of negative nu um, times the long elongation from the y. Um, and so that, if we kind of look at what to get the elongation from the y, the elongation in the y is going to look like this, except instead of being sub x, it's going to be sub y. Okay? Derp and derp, derp, derp. Um, this one is going to cause basically the same thing, except in the z direction. So it's going to cause a strain and a lateral from z equal to um, negative nu e long z. And again, the elongation in z is going to be that, except um, it's going to have a z in it. So, okay, so if we add them all together, then that means that the strain in the x direction is going to be dupes plus, oh, minus, sorry, minus dupes. Nope. Yay, over E, and then new zit up, zit up, zit up, over E again. Okay, and this is actually going to be true in all three directions. So, um, yeah, let's write that out. So it's going to look like that. All right, so we have this in all three directions. Now we're going to kind of hold on to this for a second. So pause, well, no, actually pause, but hold in your brain that information. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at Hooke's Law for shear stress and shear strain. Okay, so these are basically the same equation written three different ways, or three different axes. And remember that the G on the bottom is the shear modulus of elasticity, um, but other people call it the modulus of rigidity. Remember, it's crazy that you like actually um, learned all this. Oh, and then another way, another thing that we learned a while ago is that this is going to be this thingy. Um, divided by 2, uh, 1 plus nu. And I think whenever we learn that, we're like, this is stupid. Why are we ever going to do this or something? But now it's going to be useful. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to, um, um, how do we define volumetric strain or, or dilation? Basically, how, how do we say this? How does dv change? Okay, so that's what we mean um, when we're trying to say this all kinds of fancy. Okay, so what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to take all of these things that we had up here and we're going to add them all together because, I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> um, and so I'll show you what that's going to end up looking like. So we've got that, and if you look at it, it might not be super clear <laughs> that this uh, simplifies, or it might be, um, but basically what you have is you have this term and this term, which are the same thing, and this just has a 1 out front, so you can define um, that dilation as 1 over E times 1 minus 2 nu, um, and then times the thingy here. Um, sometimes people will write it 
slightly different. Um, they'll just put it like, um, you'll see it written like this, like this, and then this here plus sigma y plus sigma v. Okay, so there's one more thing that we want to relate this to, and that's going to be the bulk modulus. So basically the idea is we're going to think about this like hydrostatic loading. So um, I'll write this out for you, but basically whenever a volume element um, is like a piece of the little thingy is subjected to um, a static fluid pressure. Um, so I'll just actually I'll just write out the word hydrostatic loading. Um, hydrostatic loading. Because it kind of makes sense. The word hydro is water. Static means the water's not moving. So basically, if this is under water that's not moving, it's press pressing in on this at all sides. And so each one of these would be like some kind of pressure row, and they're all negative. So what that means here is um, that we have our, um, our dV change, our, our dilation, our volumetric strain. Um, is like this 1 minus 2 nu over E, but then all of these are negative rho, negative rho, negative rho, right? Um, so we've got negative 3 rho times the 1 minus 2 nu over that big giant E. Now we're going to play with the stuff a little bit more, and we'll have P over E, so we're going to put the E on the underside and flip some stuff. And um, essentially what we'll end up with is negative E all over 3 times 1 minus 2 nu. Okay, so um, basically what we're getting at here is this right here is, um, uh, we're going to call this the volume of elasticity or the bulk modulus and it's going to have the same units as stress. Okay, um, so this bulk modulus here um, we're calling as being the, the same units here as stress. And so we simplify all that by saying that P, or yeah, P um, over, why am I writing it as P when it's clearly a row? I'll fix that. Whoa, flying pen. Um, row there we go, um, rho over E, <laughs> we're just going to write that as negative K. Um, so K, <laughs> I hate it when we do this, it's like when we say R is equal to square root of blah, 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 but look, it's so pretty because it's an R. Um, so we're going to say, this is what you're going to see. Ah, come back. So we've got this thing here. Um, now for most metals, for most metals um, that new, is going to be something around a third. So what you'll usually see is they'll say, well, K is about E uh, one minus two times a third. And so that gives us E over three minus two. So it's about E. Uh, so we can use that as approximation um, when, we're, when we're looking at doing stuff like this um, for when we're looking at doing stuff like this, it's under pressure and the hydrostatic kind of pressure. Um, but it, it's just funny because I feel like in this whole like concept of mechanics materials, all the equations are really easy because they're like, look, it's K, except that K equals this. But honestly, it's really not that bad because we can just kind of pretend it looks like this. And um, yeah, so <laughs> all kinds of